Hi guys, this is Jordan here from NSM Overland and welcome back to my channel. So, I was thinking, I've been on the road for more than four months and every day I used my rooftop tent. So now I'm, I'm really used to it, I got some, some very good habits with it, to fold it and fold it, um, to use it at its best and the rooftop tent is a solution I really love if you're still not sure if you want a rooftop tent or if you need a rooftop tent or not I've made another video about pros and cons but today is for you who already have a rooftop tent because I'm gonna tell you the 10 best tips and tricks about rooftop tents let's get to it <laughs> First one, more holes in your ladder. And this is something you should do as soon as you get your brand new rooftop tent. I don't know if you noticed, but on the ladder of your rooftop tent, you have a few holes. Um, I think it's between three and five uh, when you get your rooftop tent. And this is to adjust the length of your ladder. Uh, depends on the terrain you are, if it's off camber or anything. But the problem is three or five holes are not enough. This is not enough adjustments to be comfortable in every kind of conditions. And this is something I find out really quickly. You need more holes on your ladder. So what I did on my previous one, and I'm very glad I did it during our road trip, because I really, really used this adjustment. So basically, we'll just have to drill holes into your ladder. Um, I recently did that on my new rooftop tent and with that you'll be able to get a flat floor on your rooftop tent and the right length of ladder. Sometimes your ladder is gonna be straight like this, this is very not convenient. Sometimes it's gonna be like this and that's not ideal either. You, you want a nice angle like this and with more holes, more adjustments and you'll have the perfect setup in every kind of condition. Second one, draw lines on your ladder pins. I don't know if you notice, but your ladder pins are spring-loaded, which means every time you move the upper part of the ladder, those pins will get right into the first hole they encounter. And this is a nice and secure way to set up the ladder but sometimes it can get pretty annoying when you want the ladder completely out or completely in, when you want to fold or unfold the rooftop tent. And what you can do is actually pull those pins and turn them a quarter of turn. And that way, you're gonna be able to move this upper part of the ladder freely. So what I did on those pins is actually draw a line. So I know when the line is on this position, the pins are locked and I can move the, the ladder freely. And when they're in the other position, I know that they are spring-loaded and they will get on every hole of the ladder. So you can do without those lines, but it's actually a nice visual thing, so you don't have to think about it because sometimes you, you turn the, the pins or the knob and you're not really sure if they are in the spring-loaded position or if they're on the free position. So with the lines, you'll know for sure if it's locked or not. Third one, the tablet holder. I think this is the best 13 euros I ever spent for my rooftop tents. This is a really great addition if you have a tablet, obviously. Uh, it can be used for fun as well. And okay, uh, we are overlanding out there, enjoying the great outdoor, watching the sunset, the birds, animals. This is the first to do this. But sometimes you really just want to chill in the rooftop tent. Sometimes it's dark really, really soon in the day. So you're basically stuck in your rooftop tent doing nothing. You don't want to sleep. So yeah, 
you can watch a movie on your tablet. There's nothing, nothing wrong with that. But we all know that it's pretty annoying to hold the tablet like this, especially in a lying position. And most of the time you end up with your phone or your tablet on your face because we just dropped it. So this is really not cool. And what I found is this awesome tablet holder, which is actually a tablet holder for headrest for people on the back seat so they can um, actually watch their tablet without holding it. But if you look into your rooftop tents, you're gonna see that the frame is made of tubes. And this is perfect because the end of this tablet holder is round and it's, it's actually made for tubes. So what I do every time I set up the rooftop tent is that I just put this tablet holder on the main tube and once it's set up, you just have to put your tablets on the tablet holder, obviously, lighten and enjoy your movie um, in a comfortable position in your rooftop tent. This is perfect. I love it. Fourth, tips and tricks. This one is about the annex of your rooftop tent, if you have one. Annex are great. They are a nice addition to your rooftop tent and I really recommend one if you need extra space. And we actually needed this extra space during our overland adventure in the northern uh, Europe because we had our cat with us. And this annex was actually um, our cat's place. It was really convenient, really practical. But the annex, if you already see one folded is really big and bulky. And sometimes when it's, it rains, it's muddy outside, it can be pretty dirty actually, and you don't really want to put that in your car. And the solution I came up with, and that works really well, is to fold the annex in the really flat way, the same size as um, the closed rooftop tent. Then you'll be able to put it on top of the rooftop tent and then you're gonna put the cover of the rooftop tent on top of everything. So in that way you're gonna be able to store your possibly dirty annex on top of your car on the rooftop tent. It's gonna be protected by the cover of your rooftop tent and they're not gonna take any space in your car. So it works absolutely perfect. It's just a bit tricky to keep it nicely folded and then throw it on top of the rooftop tent. That can be tricky, especially on high vehicles. But once you get used to it, this is the way of doing it. Another solution uh, will be to put the annex uh, in a trash arrow if you have one. The only problem with that is the annex take all the space in the trash arrow and then you, you can't put anything else in it. So I think on top of the rooftop tent, under the cover is the best storage place for your annex. Fifth one, already half of the video, and this one is use shoes bag. Maybe you don't know about it, but I think pretty much every rooftop tent brand have this little add-on to rooftop tents. There are actually little bags you slide on your rooftop tent for extra storage. They're great actually for shoes, uh, so you can put your shoes in them before going in the rooftop tent and you still have a nice access to your shoes before going out of the rooftop tent. But you can get two of them, one on each side of the ladder and put something else in it. I know that in my shoes bag I used to keep foam pads and tent poles for my annex. So they are cheap and really really convenient to use. And speaking of foam pads, here is our fifth tips and tricks is about foam pads and your annex. What we're gonna do with those two? So I use these foam pads to protect the floor of my annex. The floor of the annex is made of some kind of a plasticky fabric and the ladder, the fits of the ladder sit on this floor and with all the weight and the ladder which is in metal is gonna damage the floor of your annex. And this is pretty simple. I just put those foam pads under the feet of the ladder so they can protect the floor of my annex. And you can see on those foam pads the damage the ladder did to them. So imagine on the thin floor of your annex. Tips and tricks number seven. 
For this one, I want you to keep your windows open, like every time. What I mean by that is not getting your windows wide open, even during cold nights. This is not what I'm saying. What I want you to do is to just leave the windows slightly open on top so the hair can flow in your rooftop tents and this will help prevent condensation in a very effective way. You're not gonna feel the fresh hair during the night but it's really really gonna help with condensation. And another thing and this is why I really push on the 24-7 aspect of this is even if you want to close your rooftop tent keep those windows open you know why because those open windows will allow all the air trapped inside the rooftop tent to get out when you close it because if those windows are not open all the air is gonna be trapped inside the fabric inside the rooftop tent and then all the fabric just gonna get outside on every side of your rooftop tent and then it's gonna be really long and annoying to, to stuff all this fabric back inside in order to close your rooftop tent. So keep your windows open just like this on top of the windows for condensation and for an easy closing operation of your rooftop tent. Tips number eight. And this one is not something to, to do or to buy, it's something to think about. So we all know at the end of the day, we are all tired, we just want to pop the rooftop tent and probably go to sleep really, really quickly. But just before you do that, I want you to think about the wind orientation and the sun orientation, because this will impact how you're gonna open and set up your rooftop tent. Because even the slightest wind can be very very noisy during the night and obviously annoying and you'll not be able to get a good sleep and it will impact the day after you're gonna be tired you're gonna be in a bad mood you're not gonna enjoy your day so you want the wind absolutely not going into the flat surface of your rooftop tent where there are the windows on each side you want the wind going the same way your rooftop tent open so the wind can nicely flow over your rooftop tent and don't make any noise i guarantee you you'll spend five minutes figuring out how the wind is going where the wind is going and it's totally gonna worth it during the night and another thing it can be this one can be a bit more tricky is about the sun so if it's the end of the day you probably you, you probably can see the sun which is setting or you already see it so what you want to do is get your car and obviously your rooftop tents where the sun is gonna rise tomorrow morning because it, it really depends on the temperature and how many people there are in the rooftop tent but you're probably gonna have condensation in your rooftop tent. And if you want to really leave the camp spots quickly and you still want a dry rooftop tent, you will have to, to dry it. And that's, that's an annoying process and it takes time. So that's not ideal. So if you can have this nice sun in the morning directly in the rooftop tent, like the fabric is, is gonna dry really, really quickly just a bit of sun during your breakfast is going to be enough to dry your rooftop tent even if you had some rain during the night sun gonna do his job during your breakfast and then you'll just have to close your rooftop tent and go hit some trails number nine and this one's about condensation so as i said if you can have some sun and dry your rooftop tent that's perfect but we find out on the road uh, first of all, sometimes you are in a place with mountains, uh, the sun hits your rooftop tent and in the middle of the day, so that's way too late in the day because you want, if you want to enjoy the day, you want to pack everything really early in the morning and then go. And most of the time you, you don't have the sun, so you will have to take care of this condensation. If the outside of the rooftop tent is wet because of the rain, it's not really a problem and it 
never really bother me or cause any trouble. But something I really don't want is to close the rooftop tent with condensation on the inside because all of this water, humidity is gonna get into your uh, bedding because I leave all my bedding inside the rooftop tent and that it's just not gonna feel great um, the day after when you will have to sleep in a moist bed. This is not a nice feeling and you're gonna get cold. So what you want to do is to get all this condensation out, dry everything before. And the perfect solution I found for this while on the road is to use a big microfiber towel, just like this one. This towel is actually made for car detailing. This is to actually dry the body of your car after washing it so you don't have any water marks after a good wash. So obviously I don't use this towel for that anymore. I don't really care about small water marks on the, the paint of my car. But this is so efficient to dry something. It's the perfect solution for the inside of your rooftop tent. And it's actually a very, very large towel because it's made for an entire car. So it's gonna be perfect for the inside of your rooftop tent. And within less than five minutes, you will be able to dry all the inside of your rooftop tent. Tenth. And actually not last because I got, I got a bonus for you guys, tips and tricks. I really, really suggest you to find your way, step by step, to fold and unfold the rooftop tent. There are actually steps to do it, but just don't go random every time because this is the best way to forget something and it can be really frustrating when it comes to rooftop tents. So just find your way Establish steps you want to follow every time and at the beginning you will have to to think about it Okay, what's the next step? Okay, this this one Then you do it, but at the end it's gonna be mechanical I think the steps will depend on you on your vehicle the, especially the heights of it But you really want to establish steps and follow them and if you you're not good at, at remind something maybe you can just write or print your steps and put them uh, on the floor, your rooftop tent or in your car. So in that way, you can remember them. I think this is really important because once again, when we are out, when you are out there, it's really great to sleep in the rooftop tent, but it takes a bit of time to actually fold it and leave camp. And at the beginning, it's really frustrating to spend 30 minutes clothing your rooftop tent that's really really frustrating at the beginning of our road trip it was our case just annoying so much lost time and this is unbelievable but now i can close my my rooftop tent in less than 10 10 minutes in a very effective way step by step you don't even have to think about i know what to do how to do it and this is really really effective and i want you to do this and then the con of the rooftop tent being long to especially fold, it's not gonna be a con anymore, trust me on that. Okay, and I have an extra tips and tricks for you guys. Um, I really wanted to put it in the actual tip and tricks, but my rooftop tent came like this, so maybe yours too. So maybe you're already aware of this. This is why this is just a bonus, but you know that you have big poles for your windows. And if you have this extra fabric on the entrance of your rooftop tent, just like mine, you have two more big um, extensive, extensible, extensible poles. And uh, I know that <laughs> I love to sometimes just throw them on the floor so they can be a bit wet, a bit dirty. And once again, it just takes space in the car to store them and the less I put on my car, the better it is. So I saw people put their poles inside the rooftop tent before clothing it. That's an option, but as I said, sometimes they are wet or dirty and I, re I leave my bedding in my rooftop tent. So I really don't want to get anything dirty inside my rooftop tent. So my solution for this, and as I said, this is how my rooftop tent came, is to put these poles between the floor and the, the mattress just before putting your 
big cover at the end. In that way, you can store them under the mattress. If it's a bit dirty, it's, a, it's less important than on your bedding. So that's actually the best solution. So that's it for the rooftop tent tips and tricks. I really hope you enjoy them. I also hope it will help you master your rooftop tent. At the beginning, it's something pretty like mysterious. You don't really know what to do in which order and how to improve your setup. But really try those tips and tricks. They're really gonna help you. And if you spend less time with that, it's more time to enjoy the great outdoor. If you like this video and if you want some more video like this, please subscribe to my channel. It always helps. You can give a thumbs up as well. Don't forget to check my Instagram account, my Facebook page and my merch store. And if you want to support me in an other way, I also have a Patreon page. Thank you guys for watching and see you next week.